Okay, let's move on. So just a summary of all the adjusting entries. Remember the rules in the beginning, it never involves cash. So all the cash-related entries we already captured before. So when I, while I go over the adjusting entries, you see some of the entries that relates to cash, but that's just representing the ones that we covered earlier. Adjusting entries are the ones that just re either increase or decrease the type of revenue or expense account, and then ties to a s type of asset and liability, which is not cash account. Okay, so this is an example that the adjusting entry is this part. Earlier, we collected the cash, but the adjustments is that we're turning liability into a type of revenue. So for accrued uh, revenue, is the same case. If we provide a service to customer, but we haven't collected cash, we still need to make adjustments. If it's accrued expenses, remember that means, an example I gave you was salary expense, salary payable. So again, that doesn't relate to cash account. Prepaid expenses, you readily paid it in advance. The adjustments that we want to make is turn the prepayment asset into some type of expense, rent expense, or insurance expense, okay, the part that has expired. All right, so prepaid expenses, the cap paid in the beginning of the season or in the middle of the accounting cycle, and then we want to expense that asset later, once the part that has readily no longer in force. Accrued expenses is incurred first. You have employees working for you, or you have been using, let's say, a location for a while, and then you pay rent. So the payment is made later on. An earned revenue, you have collected cash from customer in the beginning of the season, and later on you turn the part of the liability into actual service revenue. Okay, the opposite would be accrued revenues. Revenue is earned first. You provided the learning service, provided the goods first, then you collect cash. Okay, so then you will have accounts receivable later. So the whole purpose of this, we're trying to properly measure net income for the period of time. So without all these adjustments, some of the accounts will be messed up. It doesn't represent the current status of the um, business operations. Okay, remember the statements, the main purpose is to provide information for outside users who are not working in the business, who relies on those statements to have an idea of what's going on in the business. So they would not know if you do not journalize these adjusting entries. They don't know whether you have been providing you service, whether you have collected or turned part of the service into, part of the liability into actual service, or you have incurred expenses that you haven't actually paid. Okay, so the whole purpose of doing this is to update some of the accounts, making sure the information we have provided to outsiders is complete. You mean this? Uh, I, I mentioned that how this liability will turn into service revenue. So, well, the process would be actually continuously providing service, like this example. So, at the beginning, customer on May twenty-first, they you collect a cash from them. That you are the client. I am the company. You paid me for a month's worth of e-learning service. And let's say that e-learning service goes on Monday through Friday continuously. Right? So by the by the time we reach the end of the month, May 31st, it has been there has been 10 days worth of service that readily been provided from me to you. This will be the part of the liability that turns into service revenue. So it will not be the entire 600 because you still have 400 for next month. Right? But by the end of the, this month, we want to represent the part that we actually provide a service to you that we did the part of our work, right? But it's only a portion of that. So that will be the process of turning it into it. Basically, it's going on a timely basis. So as time goes by, you represent the part based on the days. OK, 
Okay, we're going to do a few examples, um, have a, some journal entries examples, and also do the one set of adjusting terms later. So this slide basically summarizes all the adjusting entries that we cover now, the five types. So the upper part there you see prepayments, prepaid expenses, and example there is prepaid rent. And then the right side we turn side is the adjusting entries for the upper three. We turn prepaid rent asset into rent expense. Okay, depreciation links to one of the earlier entry when we purchase a long-term asset. Then later on as we use the asset, we represent depreciation expense, the deduction of the asset's value. The usefulness has been reduced by a certain dollar amount. Okay, so depreciation is debited, accumulated depreciation credited. An earned revenue, remember a corporation collected the cash in advance, then they provide the service. So the part of the service they provide later on between the time they collect the cash and the end of the season, that would be the part that we want to turn into actual service revenue. Okay, so for the upper three types, the right hand side is the adjusting entries with the blue arrows. For these two accrued expenses, accrued revenues, these are accumulated expenses and accumulated revenues. Okay, so we have employees working for us. The adjustments at the end of the year will be salary expense, salary payable, the liability that you owe to the employee already. Accrued revenue, if you have accumulated, you have already provided service to client, a portion of it, you want to represent the part of that it's considered cash received later, accounts receivable. Okay, so these would be the two adjustments. These two accounts here represents later on. When it reaches, remember, June 1st, we want to pay employees actually the biweekly salary by cash. So that's the time when we turn liability into actual cash payment. Okay, so these two are not adjusting entries. The upper three and the left are these two. When you go back to read the book, you see this chart there. Don't confuse yourself. These two here are the blue down the entries. And the upper three on the right hand side. Okay, anything with cash involved is not adjusting entries. So these are the entries that will happen later on in next season. So the last one here, once we have accounts receivables recorded earlier, we want to turn it into actual cash received when clients pay us the money. Okay, so that will also be an entry that happens later on. This is a table on page 145 of the book. You to make sure you mark the ones that are actually adjusting entry. It has the title there, but these two really are not. Okay, these two are the adjusting entries. Okay, T accounts. Remember journal entries, after we capture them, we always post them to the ledger. The T accounts is just exactly representing the same information, just in an account form. So look at the label there. There's A, B, C, D, E, F listed here. If you look at A, can you tell me what's the information there? You see an A on rent expense, and you see an A under prepaid rent, right? So what does it tell us? The rent has been prepaid earlier, $3,000, and then what happens? Then the $1,000 would be, if one month went by, then $1,000 worth of rent expense has, the prepaid rent has expired, right? So we turn that into rent expense. But yes, earlier we did prepay $3,000, so right now, the asset account originally was debited three thousand. Now we credit a thousand, representing reducing the asset. So we only have two thousand dollars left of prepaid rent that's still in force. Okay. Now what about B entry? You see a B under supplies and a B under supplies expense. So supplies originally, how much did we had in the beginning? Seven hundred dollars worth of supplies, and now we use up. 100, so we only have 600 left, and we use up 100 at the same time this will affect supplies expense account, so that will be debited. Okay, so B represents the entry of prepayment, specifically supplies prepayment, and then we use up a part. All right, next we have C and D. So what is C and D representing there? 
depreciation, and specifically, this relates to the furniture and building that we purchased earlier. We have furniture, historical costs, we purchased about $18,000. There's building that worth $48,000. Remember, those two amounts will stay there representing the original cost. So as we use this long-term asset, we'll reduce the value of it by listing it under depreciation and depreciation expense. So this represents then on a monthly basis, furniture, its usefulness reduced by $300 worth of value, building reduced by $200. Okay, so this again is a monthly recurring entry that will happen um, on a monthly basis. Now E and F, we have salary payable and also interest payable, interest expense. So what is representing under E? So again, salary payable relates to the employee, the personnel that's working for you. So you have we incurred this salary expense, but you haven't actually paid it out. So it's a type of liability. Interest, you borrow money from others. You haven't actually paid out this interest amount. So it's a type of pay payable as well. Typically, it's not the due date for that liability. Okay, so it would be debiting interest expense, crediting interest payable. All right, we have service revenue account and earned service revenue and accounts receivable. See service revenue, there's G over there, and the other G is under accounts receivable, so meaning that the company has been providing service but haven't collected a part of the cash that worth $400. So that's why it's an accounts receivable, cash received later. An earned service revenue and service revenue tied together, meaning that you have Earlier, an earned revenue, the liability is $600, the cash that you collected in advance. And now you provide us $200 worth of service. So at the same time, you increase the service revenue by $200. Okay, and again, an earned service revenue is a liability account. When you debit it, that means you reduce it. The credit side, $600, represents the earlier we had cash six, that was $600 that we collected in advance for this type of service. And then you provide, remember, 10 days of service. You turn $200 into actual service. 